What's going on guys? This is Damien from the Lookout and I'm here with the yellow how to play slug guide. Yeah, this video took so much effort to figure this one out to make slides. This one is bigger than any other video you can see by the runtime alone. And I think that it's one that the least people care about because like nobody really cares about this archetype. So guys, for those of you who clicked on the video, please hit that like and subscribe button, share the video, you know, like it, it took a lot of work to set up this one. So yeah, but also, yeah, hit that subscribe button because we are on our way to 1,500 subs where we're going to have a giveaway. Now, roll the video. Card Market is Europe's largest platform for all TCGs. Always find the right cards by buying and selling them across Europe with other players and collectors. Be it singles, boosters, booster boxes, or any other accessories, you name it. Card Market is the place to get them safely, securely, and readily available. So what's the game plan? What does this deck do? Well, this is a Z Energy slash Combo slash Swarm deck. It sounds a bit weird, but you basically charge Z Energy to make your other things cheaper so that you can swarm them on the field and you charge the energy by comboing a lot. This deck combos like crazy. Crazy. Uh, it combos a lot and as such it charges a ton of Z energy. I think this is the third deck after SS4, Gogeta and Sin that can charge this amount of Z energy. It charges constantly because it combos constantly. And a lot of its combos are like 10Ks and he has ways to combo for free. So, yeah, combos, charges. All battle cards have the bond skill, so it's important to have a lot of them on the field. And this is filled with one cost 10k combos. Not one drops, but pay one to combo for 10k. So you will be paying a lot to combo in this deck. And that, that's a bit of an issue, but there are ways to work around it. First, let's check out the leader. Here is our leader, Lord Almighty, Lord Slug. Um, it's a bit weird because he starts at 6 life and he actually rejuvenates for 1. It's super thematic. So when you awaken, you basically add a card to your life. Which is cool. And you can awaken turn 2. No problems. So he starts low and then like he gets a bit higher because he regains youth. It's cool. It's a fun idea. This guy enables you to use your 10k combos for free and he can easily become a massive attacker, especially the Z leader. But for now, let's just look at the Awakened side. The Awakened side is cool, but you really want to become the Z leader as fast as possible. On the Awakened side, at least you have this Activate battle, which allows you to defend if your hand is empty. Because for one energy, you can combo with your 10k guy from the drop and then you charge him into the Z energy. You want specific cards in your Z energy. So if your hand is empty, at least you can defend yourself. The Z leader is a big boy. The Z leader is super dangerous. He's like your big payoff, extremely powerful attacker. So look at this highlighted ability. First of his 20k baseline, which is awesome for a Z leader. Then also when he attacks, you draw one and you use one of your mono yellow slug army cards with a combo cost of one in drop in combo with its skills negated. Which means when he attacks, you combo with one 10k combo from the drop. He's 30k. And then he has activate battle. You can use up to one slug's army card from your hand in a combo. So you can combo with another 10k guy from your hand, making this guy a 40k attacker. Bond free is super easily achievable because you just swarm your field and this gives the guy double strike. So now you have 40k double strike attacker on your turn. Th this guy is super, super strong. You see, no, and you just need to be on three lives or less to, uh, to Z awaken. So now you see why you really want to rush to get this guy out. When it comes to battle cards, these two are your MVPs of the deck, so your one drops. Here's the deal. You have a whole bunch of free drops and a whole bunch of five drops. 
but you don't have ways to cheat them in. You have ways later because five drops can be played if you have three drops in your Z energy, but three drops are expensive and you really cannot cheat them in. So that's why you're using these one drops. These one drops allow you to, for one energy, play a free drop from your hand. These guys always, always hard mulligan for these guys. These guys are the best cards in the deck. Here's an example of how you do this. You play your one drop, he searches for a free drop, you grab him, you pay one when you combo with your one drop or whatever, you play the free drop. When free drop eventually dies, or he's just removed somehow, your leader's permanent activates, sending him to the Z energy instead of the drop. Then you can play, pay one to play the five drop, because the five drop requires the free drop in the Z energy. That's a super, super simplified version of how this works. You also have a pretty good Z battle card. This one is an incredibly important part of the deck. What this wall of text actually says, because it is a wall of text, is that it tutors for a 5 drop, but more importantly, it can remove a free drop from the battle area, triggering your leader's permanent, which says that when a card is removed from the battle area, you charge it into a Z energy. Now you have the corresponding free drop in the Z energy, allowing you to pay one to cheat out the five drop that you have tutored for into the play. So that's effectively what this Z battle card does. It grabs you your five drop and then it basically allows you to play him for one energy if you have the corresponding free drop on, on the field. So it's an incredibly important part of this deck. It's a very, very good Z battle card for this deck. Here is an example of how you do this. So you play your Z battle card, you search for a five drop, you grab like this Medamacha. Then you pick a free drop on the field. You pick the Medamacha free cost to send to your drop. However, your Z leader's permanent activates, which means that when this card leaves the battle area, you send it to your Z energy instead, and then you put a Z energy into your drop. That second part doesn't matter. You send him to the Z energy. He goes to the Z energy, and then the five drop says, pay one if you have a meta matcher with an energy cost of three and one combo cost, which is the free drop, you play him from your hand. And then you just pay one and play him. So this is how you play your Z battle card. There is another part of this deck and that is the slug chain. So you have a free cost, a five cost and an eight cost. This chain is garbage. It's complete trash. Don't play it. Like, here's why. So first off, you need to cheat in your free drop. You do this with your uh, one drops. So you're cheating this guy in instead of setting up your five drops in the Z energy so that you can play your better free drops. So you're just cheating this guy into play. And then for five drop, this guy needs to be, the free drop needs to be in your Z energy so that you can cheat this guy out for two, but you can only cheat him out for two when you have three or more energy. And then he's a 10k dual attacker who maybe gets double strike if you have bond free. So like, okay. But then you need on turn four, on turn four, play, pay free energy, have both the free drop and the five drop in your Z energy so that you can play the eight drop who effectively does nothing he has zero protection, he is 30k triple strike a guy on turn 4 with no protection whatsoever. So yeah, don't, and he has bond free requirement to be better. Just, just don't play this chain, don't play this chain at all. Just like, if you open the airdrop in your booster packs, toss him into garbage, like this is just awful. Um, maybe, maybe run like 2-5 drops maybe it, that's basically it you can run maybe some free free drops but there is a lot better one speaking of a better free drop this is the best card in the entire archetype like this card is amazing everything else is like garbage the slug chain is just trash but this guy wow 
wow this guy is the reason why you play this deck so you can cheat him out on turn two because he's a free drop with 1k uh, one cost 10k combo he's a double striker if he gets bond to activate so you just need one more guy on the field bond to activate he's a 25k guy he gets a plus 5k power when you play him the guy ko's something in rest mode when you combo with him you uh, when you combo with him choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode that isn't attacking and ko it like you just remove things like this guy alone is infinitely better then the other 5 drop and the 8 to drop, I think this guy alone is better than the entire select chain combined. So run this guy. Just run him and just ignore the rest of the slug chain. Okay, let's talk about the mulligan. This is why you guys are here. So let's talk about the mulligan and how you play this deck. There are two versions of the mulligan. This is the first one. You go with Kakuya. So you get your 1 drop always always hard mulligan for the one drops then you grab like two uh, two five drops you don't keep any free drops because you get them from your one drop just get two five drops basically so that you can charge one into z energy for free because you need two z energy on turn two and then the other one hopefully you get the corresponding free drop the better mulligan is this one this one is only only if you get Gyoshu in your opening hand before you start mulliganing. If you hit this guy, hard mulligan for Lord Slug. Just hard mulligan for Lord Slug. Get a 5 drop, get like 2 5 drops so that you can combo. Uh, Angela is here, Angela is good for comboing. Medamacha is better for keeping. So keep that in mind, we will go over this super aggressive play a bit later but first we will start you know just with the underwhelming this is how you usually play in general play but yeah this is your other mulligan only if you get hit gyoshu in your opening hand hard mulligan for lord slug and two five drops we will now be going over your turns one to turn three so one to three uh we will be going with the bed like how you usually play if you don't hit gyoshu turns one to three and then for the better one, we're just going to, to go to like first two turns. There's a decent amount of diversity in the first few turns, depending on your mulligan. We're assuming that you're going first and the goal is to awaken on turn two and to set up your board. Let's go. Your turn one is pretty much always the same. You start the game, you pay one for your one drop, you draw a card and then you just end your turn. That's it. You just pay one, play the one drop, that's it always the same this part is super crucial on your opponent's turn always always combo always combo with one of your five drops or combo like with something that's free just combo so that you can charge one z energy because you need to have two z energy on turn two and you will have only one attacker because you will be comboing off the one drop so always always combo so that you can charge 1z energy. Now comes the part that I have spent like hours making uh, and like wrecking my brain on how to best do this. So here's my idea. Turn two, you attack. Leaders auto triggers, discard one, draw two. Okay, then during your attack, combo with the one drop, Kakuya, pay one to search for a free drop. Then hopefully you get like Angela. We're using Angela in this example, but you can use the Medamacha then just reverse the cards on uh, on this slide but let's just go with angela now so angela you grab it the free drop and then you send the one drop to your z energy you play the free drop that's what the one drop does i mean you send it to your z energy because you've come up with it now you have two z energy that is your awakening condition you awaken you draw one you ready one energy you put one card into your life okay now it's time to attack you attack with Angela and you activate its activate battle ability, which allows you to combo with one of your free drops. You combo with Medamacha. So you send this free dropped Medamacha to Z energy. Your Angela attacker is like 14k now. You finish the attack and then you pay one. So after the attack, you pay one. You play 
the one drop, uh, the Z battle card. You find a five cost angler in uh, in your deck, then you send this uh, this one drop to the drop. That's the ability of the Z battle card. You need to remove the one drop. So you go to remove your one drop, and then your Z leader, then your leader's permanent activates, stating like, okay, when this guy is removed, send him to the Z energy. You send him to the Z energy, and from the Z energy, you grab your one drop and you send that one to the drops. So now you have both Angela and the Madamacha in your Z energy. Then you pay one, your last energy, to play the five drop Angela, which is like 16, uh, 16k blocker. You just play this guy, you pass the turn. Start of turn three, you can now pay one energy to play your 5-drop Madamacha because you have sent the Madamacha 3-drop to your Z energy when you used Angela 3-drops uh, activate battle on the previous turn. The Madamacha creates a 5k token and from this point over, onward you can do a lot of things. You can pay one for another Angela 5-drop, you can play, you play your 1-drops to get more fuel, focus on dropping the 5-drop slug, play another Metamacha 5-drop, uh, get the free drop out. Basically, you have a lot of options now moving forward. So yeah, well, this was pretty long. This was like a 3 minutes long explanation. But yeah, this is like basically how you play this like super convoluted deck. And now for the better play, the aggro play. Okay, so this one is a bit more complicated. I mean, like it's super simple, but it requires a different mulligan. You need Gyoshu, you need Lord Slug 3 drop, you need Medamacha 5 drop, and you need like something to combo off on your opponent's turn. Like it can be literally anything that you can combo off for free, just don't combo off this Medamacha. Okay, so this is your mulligan. Now your first turn is basically start, pay 1, play the 1 drop, search for a 3 drop, get the Medamacha, and then end the turn. If you didn't start with a free cost meta in your hand, because yeah, that's another thing that you need to mulligan for, I'm sorry. If you didn't start with him in your hand, then pray to get the one drop. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise it's going to be a little bit harder, but there are still ways to filter the deck when you attack with your leader and then you just draw two. There are ways to get him, but it's better that he's in your starting hand or that you just hit him with the one drop. Same as the last time on your opponent's turn, just combo anything. Combo like Kangla 5 drop, combo another 1 drop. J just combo something when they attack you so that you can charge the Z energy because you need to Z energy to awaken. Okay, now comes the big long part again. So, attack with your leader, discard 1, draw 2, combo with the 1 drop and pay 2 energy this time. Pay 2. First, you pay 1 for your one drop which is like when you combo with him you get to play in the free drop but before you do that you pay one more energy for combo and you combo with the free cost medamacha and you send that one to z energy medamacha has an auto that says when you combo with it switch something to rest mode now that this has been resolved you get to play your free drop free drop when he plays from the from the hand he ko's something in rest mode so you see, you have comboed off your Medamacha so that you can switch something to rest mode and then that you can KO it with a free drop. Now you need one more guy on the field. You awaken, draw one, uh, put one card to your life, ready one energy. Then you pay your final energy to cheat out the five drop because the five drop Medamacha requires the free drop to be in your Z energy. So you play him, you create a token, now your bond 2 is online and you're swinging with a 25k double strike guy and then you're swinging with your 15k meta matcha and then you're ending your turn. You leave the meta token in active mode so that you can use him while defending and you can do a similar play with Angela instead of meta matcha. You can go with Angela but then you're not swinging a second time but instead you just have a blocker out. And that's basically the only difference. So here is the big aggro play on turn two. Last thing that we need to go over is older stuff. So please 
if you're playing this deck, play these cards. These cards are better than a lot of other stuff in this engine. These cards are better than the entire Lord Slug engine. So you should always run them. You run your one drop, you want Lord Slug Super Namekian. If this card doesn't get banned or anything, you run this guy because this video is coming out before the ban list. And then you run three copies of this Angela, which you can just cheat in with successor. So if you can, always run this older stuff it is better than the entirety of the slug chain trust me play this in this deck let's summarize the video let's summarize the deck man this has been a long one so this deck requires a lot of setup as you've seen it requires a whole bunch of setup and it usually gets going around turn three the sooner you get your boss master out the better but it still requires a whole bunch of setup it isn't weak, I don't think that this deck is weak, but it requires jumping through a whole bunch of hoops to get working. Like you said, like you need to get this guy with the one drop and then to have a specific combo thing in the Z energy and then you play your, um, your Z battle card to bounce something but it said it's going to the Z energy and you cheat out stuff for one it requires that you jump through a whole bunch of hoops before you can actually start doing things. The boss monster is just awful. Ignore the entire slug chain, it's trash. Maybe, maybe play like two copies of the five drops, but the rest is just garbage. The free drop is okay, but like the other free drop, the one with the villainous, is much better. The Z leader makes up for the poor boss monsters, because it's a 40k double strike attacker on your turn. So yeah, 40k double strike is pretty sweet. So yeah, but that's it, you know. I'm not liking this deck. I don't think that I will be playing it, but there is some potential here. However, so many hoops. So, so many hoops to jump through. That's it for the video. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think of the Lord Slug deck? Will you be trying it out? Are you a Lord Slug fan? So let me know, I really want to hear your thoughts about this one, especially what do you think of the slug chain, like the boss monster, am I just wrong, or is it just like, dude, like you need way, way too much to get this going? Uh, I read all of your comments, I try to respond to everything, I love our little community, hit that like and subscribe button, help us get to 1500 subs, and one more thing, this video is coming out today on the 27th. 27th and on the 28th we will be streaming stuff on twitch you know for the majority of the day so uh drop in we're not streaming dragon ball we're streaming some other things but we are open to talk about the dragon ball and i'm looking forward to seeing some of you there maybe we can even go over spoilers as they're revealed maybe the ban list will get revealed while we're streaming so just jump in come and say hi now, this has been Damien from The Lookout, and I'll see all of you in the next video.